I showed up for a one-on-one -on -one family constellation the other day with Amrly, who I do this work with, and who will also be participating in my first in-person event in November called Audacious Embodiment. And she was explaining to me how in Family Constellation, there is this concept that gluten is the father energy and dairy is the mother energy. And that when you're in rejection of these foods versus preferring not to eat them, there's something there. We discussed what it is to get to a place where I am not any longer in rejection of certain foods. So there aren't foods that are on the no way, no how list. There are simply foods that I prefer to eat and ones that I prefer not to. And that may change moment to moment. So this is not the way I've lived for over a decade. And it's a very new paradigm and also makes sense in the rest of my perspective and approach that there is a maturation of this process, that it is not static. And so she encouraged me to speak to my body. So this is sort of obvious. And I took the time to do it because of her encouragement. So I sat down I talked to my body and like parts work, I spoke to my gut and I saw this image actually of a watermelon, interestingly, was sort of representing my gut. And I asked what's needed and felt into what's being held energetically and emotionally by this area of my body. And the memo that I got <laughs> was you should go buy a uh, Briar's ice cream and eat it. Okay. I thought, well, that's funny. And I'm not doing that. And Briar's ice cream was one of the staples of, I would say my like tween and well, pretty much my whole life until I changed my diet, but the dimensions of my childhood that I recall and tween and teen years. So anyway, I just was like tickled by the idea and then went on with my life. And maybe I talked to my girlfriend about it and just like, I don't know what to make of this. It's interesting. It seems to me like I should be potentially more restrictive with my diet at this point rather than less. So I think it was the next day or within 48 hours. And this is how family constellation works, by the way, there's literal magical things occur in your life after you do this work. So I was packing to move and the moving guys were coming and my daughters were not in the house. And I went into my eldest daughter's room to ready the couple of boxes that were in there because we took almost nothing with us. And I go into her room and I notice on the ground is a napkin and the napkin has two donuts in it. It's just literally on the floor. And I pick up the donuts and I recognize them immediately as Entenmann's donuts. So I didn't even know Entenmann's was still around. However, if you were 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s kid, you know Entenmann's donuts. These, so the Briars was pretty high up there, but if I had to pick one thing that was a junk food that represented my hedonistic relationship to snacks, it would be these donuts. I used to buy them by the carton and I would dip them in coffee. And I drank like six cups of coffee a day in my twenties. And these donuts appeared in my fucking house. Okay. So it doesn't get more on the nose than that. So I didn't have to go get the briars because the entomens appeared literally in my house two days after I had this experience of opening to the possibility that there is a softening that's required of me, that there is a rigidity and a dogmatism that is not serving me and is potentially at this point, keeping me in, in an immature state of masculinity and arresting the development of my feminine. So of my relationship to my impulses, my desires, my pleasures, and the way that my inner child holds the access points. So could it be that there are dimensions of my little girl that are 
longing for, maybe even obsessed with (laughs) these eroticized taboo foods that are holding all of this vital force energy. So I know you're on the edge of your seat, but here's what happened. I was just going to throw them out and I was drinking a chai latte. And I realized that I have an opportunity to eat these fucking donuts. So I do that. I made a little ritual out of it and I ate not one, but two Entenmann's donuts. I dipped them in the chai, which looks like coffee. So I was brought back to this scene and they were absolutely delicious. I have no idea how old they were. Absolutely. De- and doesn't matter because of all the preservatives in there, they could last for an era. And at the end, I had this really funky film, like waxy film all throughout my mouth. Oh my God, it was gross. And so it was not entirely blissful. It was not entirely ecstatic. It was also gross. And so it was this very balanced experience of something that had I not revisited it, might have continued to hold this idealized charge and the attachment of some dimension of my inner child. And what's funny is that when I told my daughter the story, she said, I won't even eat those because they're so gross. (laughs) So that's why they were sitting there. Somebody gave them to her and she wouldn't even eat them. So on some level at this point, she already has that level of discernment because I certainly didn't. And at this point, perhaps I'm developing it, (laughs) but there was something liberated for me where I not only moved through this experience of foods, have I gone out and bought them? No, it's just was an experience and now it's done. And there are probably a handful of other foods like that, that are in this, you know, glass cabinet of thou shalt not touch these ever again. And I just, in some dimension of myself, am in devotion to them, obsessed with them. So through this experience, I have softened those rigid, reflexive, firm, no boundaries to come into an understanding that my impulses and my intuition hold very valuable information for myself and directions. And I have proven to myself that I am this resilient. So I know that many of you have these stories. You probably have these stories with pharmaceuticals and with other uh, things that become taboo in the health space that come into this framework of good and bad that we know holds the energy of a certain polarity that can get charged. And if you're in defiance of one end of the pole, you are also in its erotic caress, as I call it. So I can't say that I'm going in the deep end of eating all the junk foods at this point. However, I do think that this is just a a dimension of the healing through a strict food protocol conversation that I would like to put on the table.